Patsy Palmer and Matt Evers joined me now. It's lovely to see both of you. That was last week, of course. Yes. Wow. wow. Yeah, no wonder you're saying wow. What, what happened? <laughs> Do you, you look as if you're having the time of your life. I really am, and I'm really trying to enjoy every second because, as we know, we do things over the years for work and they go by in a flash and they're amazing experiences sure. and you're never going to get them again and you spend so much time being nervous and petrified that you look back on them and you say, I just wish that I would have found the courage oh, to enjoy it a little bit so more. So that's what you're trying to do. And that's what I'm trying to do. And Thanks. it's working a little bit, but the nerves 100% oh. take over when you're in that live Especially performance. It's, well, it's live, that's the thing. And it's on ice. You know, and it's on ice. <laughs> but I have to say, you've got one massive advantage. This man. Huge. Oh, I mean, bless come you. on. Yeah. You know, if you were ever going to get somebody to do that with, you, you must have thought, <laughs> thank goodness, yes, it's like winning the lottery. I know, I love him. And <laughs> just for every reason, for as a friend now, and as a, you know, just he's a beautiful human being. I think. Inside and out. The, so there you are. They, well, thank you very much. <laughs> The part of my job is, yes, to teach ice skating, but also what I have found through the past 15 series and the past 15 celebs that I have taught is we're not here for a long time. Let's have a good time. Yeah, you know, that's like, a really good It's just a matter of trying to have fun and trying to enjoy the experience. Exactly. And I guess part of your job, I know that, you know, the teaching skill, but it's all about building confidence mm. and trust. We're the babysitter, we're the psychologist, are. we're the, all You're of the everything. above. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely everything. So it's, it's, you know, thankfully this this works yeah. for us this year. It's great. No, it's good. It's a, really, it's a really good year and really interesting to see. You can see already the people that are very good, but also the people that have got potential. And I think you've got real real potential the, well, the judges I said that so, you know yeah. i want to just keep trying and trying and and it is baby steps there's no point in trying to push yourself more than you can do and yeah all of the professionals are really mm. really skilled at helping you to do that exactly i feel sad that john went out because i think john is the typical person that i wanted to see his journey because right. he was mm. He had everything about him that wanted so much to improve. Mm. And you know, his age and he's very big and mm. that's challenging. And you can see he he has put so much into this, hasn't he? Like with his you all do, training, everybody does. All of you but do. But we're always going to be sad whenever, we're all going to go like, you know, it's going to be <laughs> well, now, like yeah, that. Now, now that the, you know, last night the first person went home, it's now every week till the final. I know, which is oh. really sad when you think about it. But what we like to see, and it's the same as Strictly, you want to see people who, yeah, they've tried really hard, but they're not quite there. And then week by week by week, we just see the growing in confidence and, and they're getting better and better and trying really Yeah, you hope things. you can stay in long enough. But there's a lot of factors in this. One is very physical. It's dangerous, so anything can happen. You can get injuries. I've had a couple of... We've had a couple of mm -hmm. spectacular injuries, yeah. falls yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. yeah there's a lot of literally falling. Literally, when Matt everywhere. Like, dives, I see him in midair, like, diving over me to save me, and you're wow. like... Oh. That's the other thing as well that you've got to do. If the, if the balance is slightly off, yeah. you've not only, you, know, you have to kind of correct that to make sure that we as the audience don't see that. Well, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Right. You know, like, between the camera <laughs> angles and costumes and all the special effects and then what we do as the pros as well. Yeah. Like, Alex, with John last night, like, he's t almost twice the size of her. Yeah, and big she is so strong to be able she to help manipulate incredible. that. You know? Exactly. Have you exactly. seen, I mean, her and her husband, they Luke are Ash. magical. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. They are magical skaters. I what mean. made you want to do this, Patsy? Was Just there because... You know, I don't know about you, but I, when I turned 50 last year, I was shocked. I woke up and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not sure this is right. Is it? Can somebody Tell correct me, about me it. on this? I, know like, what you mean. <laughs> I don't know how you were supposed to feel at 50, but I certainly didn't feel 50. And I was like, right, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I feel my age. I'm going to just enjoy myself and, <clears throat> excuse me, do everything that I can do sure. this year to have a good time, yeah. you know, and just really kind of challenge myself and good see for you. what it feels like. And this came up. And I was like, everyone was saying, do it, do it, do it. Denise Welch, <laughs> she was like, do it. It's the best thing I've ever done. And she was brilliant. Now mm -hmm. I look back, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone realizes how good Denise was when she did that. You're right, on yeah. Ice. yeah. Because it's really so good. hard. And when I'm watching all the tricks that she did now, I am so impressed. So she just <laughs> said, do it because it's going to be a personal journey and you're not going to understand what I mean until you do it. And I'm learning a lot about myself. That's good, and get more confident. What a do lot. the kids think? Are they enjoying? Oh, they are much? so excited.
Well, join me now is Lady Victoria Hervey, a former girlfriend of Prince Andrew, who also knew Ghislaine Maxwell, alongside US lawyer Dr Anne Olivarius. Thank you both for joining me this morning. And Victoria, Hello. he's always denied all of these allegations all the way along. So why on earth did he pay it off? Why do you think he paid it off? Um, I mean, in my opinion, well, from what I know, um, I he didn't have a choice. Um, he was forced to... Uh, he was forced to not... He basically didn't get his day in court and was not allowed to fight, um, you know. Who would have forced him the most? You know, someone like him, from what we know of his character, who would have actually had the power to say to him, you're not doing this? Well, who do you think? I, I don't Buckingham know. Palace. Yeah, you think? You think yeah, it would have come, I, I, come from I him? I do. I, I think it was Buckingham Palace put the pressure on him and um, he, was, he, he, he basically was not allowed to fight it. But surely he would know the consequences of doing this, of settling. He must have known that, that what would happen, he would be ousted from the royal family. You know, he would be a pariah. He would never be able to get back in again. Well, actually, I th you know, I, I think that... He, well, as far as that, the, the titles were supposed to be given back to him. They were never, you know, officially going to be taken away. It was only briefly going to be taken away while it, it, it was going to be fought when he was going to be a private citizen in court. Now, this notorious photograph that we've seen mm -hmm. um, of Prince Andrew and Virginia Griffey, and we can see Ghislaine Maxwell in the background there, she right. says it's a fake. Yeah. He says he doesn't remember it being taken. Um, and he's also, uh, he also said in that notorious interview as well, you know, he said, I've no recollection of that, but he never said it's a fake. And if it was a fake, why did he not, say, why has he not said this long before? Well, I don't think he was allowed to say it as a fake because otherwise, you know, he could have had Virginia possibly come after him um, without having enough proof that it is a fake. That's the thing, isn't it? It's the, how do we prove? Because this yeah. is back in 2001, isn't it? Yeah. When things like photoshopping were in their infancy and mm -hmm. surely we would be able to tell whether or not that's been photoshopped. So many people yeah. have looked at it. But exactly. Do we know what I mean, the original I, I, is? Yeah, I mean, I, I have, you know, I, I, I've been in contact with the person who I believe is the real person that took the pictures at Kinnerton Street and, um, He's told me exactly like how it was done, and that um, you know he was involved in actually doing the Photoshop. Let things. me just very quickly ask Anne because Anne, has he got yeah. any chance at all? Uh, thank you for for talking to us this morning. Any chance at all of, of of overturning this, of perhaps going to a trial, of perhaps getting the money back? Is it is it at all legally you know possible for him to do that? Look, our firm and I have handled hundreds, if not thousands, of cases of sexual assault, trafficking. And I can tell you when these settlements are agreed in New York, it's really hard, virtually impossible to overturn something. There has to be evidence of fraud. But of course, the settlement in this matter was not because of the photograph. That was never a part of it. Sure, the photograph has been part of a PR campaign and it has ruined his image. It's, it's you know, digital proof that he actually knew, you know, Virginia Dufre. That's true. But the settlement, unlike what Lady Victoria has said, with respect, you know, he was involved in this litigation for over a year. He had excellent counsel, you know, and it's one of these stories, again, where we see so often a wealthy man accused. He says, well, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He fights for over a year with really excellent counsel, they make decisions. Right or wrong, they make decisions. He had a choice then to settle up right at the beginning before a big public brouhaha had happened, and he didn't do that. And he only settled because he gave that Emily Matlas interview. It was shown that he's really an arrogant and a man who just cannot accept any criticism of himself. He told stories that cannot be vindicated about the Pizza Express where he was that night, allegedly with his children, and of course, this whole thing about being in you know, the Falklands and being a hero and then suffering afterwards, deeply suffering and not being able to sweat, which medically has been challenged. And he, they knew, his lawyers knew that he was coming up to a deposition in the United States. And in the deposition, you have to answer questions or the judge intervenes or you're found in contempt. And so we'd have to answer questions about his lifestyle, about the gang of men he hanged around with, I mean, he's got lots of pictures with Epstein. Those are much more powerful to me than the one with Virginia Dufresne.
So, you know, he had this deposition coming up. He was going to have to try to tell the truth. And he decided, I better settle this case. Because if I don't settle, I've got bigger problems. Yeah. So that's why he mm -hmm. the case. It had nothing to do with the picture of Virginia Dupre. So the, the, the yeah. photograph I mean, really no, is I mean, I, I mean, I, I, that she's just, she's just, you know, she's talking very generally and everything. Has told us this morning that an asteroid, it's about the size of a London bus, expected to come within 2,100 miles of Earth this week. Could be the closest for all oh, 300 years. Well, joining me now is former NASA astronaut Bruce Melnick. He spent more than 300 hours in space. How cool is that? Now works as an ambassador from the Kennedy Space Centre Visitor Complex. We're going to be all right, aren't we, with this astronaut? You'll fix it. It'll be fine. Have, have you seen the movie Don't Look Up? Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. It's, it's, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to it's be going like to be that. fine, isn't it? It's going to be fine. Um, if, if we had a, a an experiment uh, launch last year of this satellite called DART that actually went and hit the dimorphous a asteroid, okay. and that asteroid was 180 meters across, a lot bigger than a London bus, Indeed. and it actually diverted that asteroid. So we're Gosh. we're pretty prepared for anything like that. It's amazing how we catch up with sci-fi and, yeah. and movies and all of that. Now you're in a very elite group. A very elite group. What an amazing experience to, to have seen the Earth. I mean, that, that must be... It's got to change you, hasn't it? It has to change you quite profoundly. It, it really does. Uh, my first view of the Earth was... Uh, it, it, made, it actually made me make a mistake on the first job I had in space. I was supposed to take a picture of the external tank right after the space shuttle got off it. And I was so mesmerized at looking at this beautiful planet for the first time that I forgot to take the pictures. And my commander said, Bruce, why aren't you taking pictures? And I said, what? Oh, the tank. <laughs> and then by the that. time I took pictures, it was late. Wow, yeah. that's extraordinary. And you, you had real tenacity because you had this dream that you wanted to be an astronaut. And it's very difficult, as we know, to get in. But you tried and tried and tried again. You were not going to give up. Absolutely. I started applying in 1977 when they first looked for astronauts to fly in the space shuttle while they were still building it. And I applied for 10 years. I applied six times to the astronaut corps before they finally accepted me in 1987. So that just shows you if you've got a dream, go do not it. be put off at the first hurdle. Have tenacity exactly. and, and keep going. And really, now you work as an ambassador for the Kennedy Space Center. That's an amazing thing to do um, because it's so important that we get that message out there of just how important it is to explore, to find out what's just to find out the big questions, isn't it? It's the massive big questions we want answers to. Well, it, it, but being the ambassador for the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, I mean, it's the best job a former astronaut or veteran astronaut can have because I'm mm -hmm. still living it. I'm still, you know, getting to reminisce about it. Yeah. I get to see my colleagues every day at the Visitor Complex. We have an astronaut there every day for the people to meet and it's talk wonderful. to. I mean, it's just wonderful. It's a great uh, edutainment place to go. It really is. And it must be so fantastic for you, especially when it's young uh, boys and girls mm -hmm. who are so enthused because I guess that's part of your job is to to kind of like get that enthusiasm and answer all their questions and you know there's future NASA employees there maybe not future astronauts there might be but you don't know they, they may be but I, I was 11 years old I was in the sixth grade when Alan Shepard first flew and that's oh. when I first thought wow what a great thing that would be to be an astronaut and so he was my inspiration and then when these young people come to the visitor complex they get to see an astronaut talk to them get to see rockets that have actually flown in space get to you know see Atlantis that went to space 33 times I mean it's and it's it's fun to see the smile on the young people's oh, faces. Yeah. I was lucky enough to go there myself and be sort of put through astronaut training. It was an amazing experience. And again, you know, I just felt like a kid. Oh, that I did the I did the zero thing. I know that's nothing to you, but I did that zero gravity um, flight. Oh, yeah. oh, honestly, Bruce, I was like a child. I was like a toddler. I was so excited. Isn't that fun? Isn't that it's fun? It's so fun. And you only get to do it for like 20 seconds. I know, at it's a not time, like you. But, you but did we got it. to do it for days at a time. Oh, it was days great. on end, which is amazing. Well, look, Artemis, and I know you've got Artemis there. We do. That is fantastic. So that that's going to be how we get some sort of because what we've got to do in order to get to Mars is to have some sort of base on the moon. Is that Correct. how it's going to work? Right. Correct. And so we already flew Artemis once, yeah, the first yeah. test flight. Next year, we're going to fly Artemis with people on board. And they're actually, after they circle the Earth a few times, they're going to do a lap around the moon. And then the year after that, we're going to land on the moon again. It's oh, going to be awesome. Oh, that's um, You know, I'm so glad that I'm going to be alive to see that. Yes. I haven't been a 10-year-old and experienced the first time with Neil Armstrong and, and Buzz Aldrin. It's going to be amazing. And what do you think? I mean, how long is it going to be, do you reckon, until we might actually get a person 
on Mars? You know, I, I think it could be within the next 20 or 30 years. Wow. I don't think it's that far off. Right. Uh, once we establish that lunar base and once we establish the gateway around the moon where we can bring a rocket and refuel it, you know, that's the hard part is leaving Earth's gravity. But if we can launch or operate from the moon where there's a lot less, one-sixth the gravity, it's a lot easier to get to Mars from there. Of course. It's exciting, isn't it? It is. Isn't it, it exciting? Is. And for people that don't get it and maybe say, oh, come on, why are we spending all this money or why are we doing this? Um, I always say, why would you know? Why would you not? You know, but what exactly. would you say to people who have got, who might think, oh, no, but why are we? You know, we've got enough problems here. Is what well, people always say to you, isn't it? Well, we do, but I mean, we've always been explorers. You know, where did we come from? Where are we going? Why are we here? Uh, I mean, we didn't just stay on this continent. You know, we went across the Atlantic Ocean and discovered America. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we're explorers, and that, that's in our heart. And oh, by the way, what we find out and the technology it takes to do these things better every human being on the planet. Absolutely. Bruce, you know things. Do you think that we might, there might be something else out there. I would love to think that there is. And do you think it would be a bit arrogant for us to think we're the only life forms, you know, th sentient beings <laughs> in I, I, the big I universe think, of ours? I, I think it's impossible that it's not. I, you know, when you look at every star that we can see from Earth, and every one of those stars probably has a planet around it. Yeah. And then you see what the Hel Hubble Space Telescope has shown us with all the different galaxies that are out there. And then now we have the James Webb Telescope that's gone beyond that and the trillions and trillions of galaxies out there with the trillions and trillions of stars around in each galaxy. And they all have planets on them to think that we are the only planet, this little blue marble that has living beings on it is, is pretty far-fetched. I don't think it can happen. I they're think, they're yeah. out there. I, th I think yeah. they are out there. I just hope they're friendly. I hope, they're, I hope they meet someone like you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Michelle, I absolutely loved the film. I loved everything about it. I loved how strong Mitzi was as a character. I think I know the answer to this question, but was it easy for you to say yes to this role? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought as much, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't even think I said yes. I just started working on it. Straight just, away. Yeah, when, you know, I, so I, I, I got this message that Stephen wanted to talk to me, and I really had no idea why. I could not let myself imagine that he wanted to work with me. Um, and then we had this Zoom, and halfway into the Zoom, I realized what was happening and what he was asking me to do. And um, I, like, wiped the tears from my eyes, and then, you know, the, the work began. So how did you feel in that moment then? I'll never get over it. I like I feel like I'm still living in that moment. You know, it's like um, I'll never forget it. Wow! And it's the first time that you've actually worked with Stephen, isn't it? Yeah. How was that? More than I could have dreamed, really. really. Yeah. As excited as I was, and as much as I knew it was like just such a it was such an honor. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this for 30 years since I was 12 years old. So to think, like this is where I've sort of landed after all these years yeah. acting is just so meaningful and so moving but the actual experience of working together was I, I couldn't have imagined how joyful it would be joyful fun I, like being kids just like playing it was just like this like very deep sense of play that went around um, all of the actors uh, on set it really felt like a family um, it was obviously a very important role especially for Stephen because you are portraying his mother, did you find that there was quite a lot of pressure to make sure that you got her as right as possible? Pressure, yes, but also like thrill, yeah. you know? I mean, what a beautiful mountain to climb and to climb it with him, the person who knew her so well and loved her so much. Mm -hmm. So I, I surprisingly didn't feel as intimidated as I thought I would. I just felt supported and um, cheered on by yeah. him. And he gave you some items of hers, didn't he, for you to just kind of hold on to and, I guess, embrace her and embody yeah, her. Like little totems, you know, I had her perfumes and a shirt and a pair of earrings and um, just sort of like little things to kind of touch when I needed. Yeah, I think she was a very forward-thinking mum. So ahead of her time. Absolutely, like, ahead what of a modern curve. woman. Um, what would you want people to take away from this film, if anything? You know, I think the ability to see their own childhoods, their own families, the, you know, the different ways that we've all grown up to see sort of, to, to see that reflected in this story, that while it's about Steven Spielberg's childhood, it's, it's much more universal than that. Has there ever been a moment for you where something has happened and you've known, that's it, I want to do what it is that I do now? I remember seeing a play when I was a really little girl, maybe 10 years old or something, and 
I just thought, oh, I want to be with those people singing and dancing and together. Like it looked like, I think the play was Annie and it was all these kids singing and close to each other and they just looked like they were having so much fun and they belonged together. And I Mm. thought, oh, that looks like something I'd like to do. Yeah, I love a bit of Annie. It's a hard knock, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. (laughs) It does look fun, doesn't it? They're all together. Did you feel that there was ever a moment that you, you just kind of didn't want it to ever end. I mean, I still feel like that. I haven't worked since. I did have a baby, so I was b- busy with something. But I haven't worked since I made this movie. And, you know, part of me is still there. I love the film, as I've said. Thank and you. I'm super excited for everything that's to come. Obviously, there's a buzz around awards. How are you feeling? Are you excited? I, you know, I always say, like, just to go to work is enough. Like I said, I've been doing this for 30 years, so that now sitting here talking to you about a Steven Spielberg movie is, um, that's the reward. Well, congratulations. You handled it very well. Thank you so much. I loved it. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks, Jill. Right now, though, it has been 24 years, would you believe, since he first starred in The Mummy. And now Brendan Fraser has made a spectacular and very deserved return to Hollywood with his Oscar-nominated role in The Whale. Well, Brendan joins me now. Congratulations. Thank you, Lorraine. Remarkable film. Absolutely. And you're so good. And you're you're in just about, in fact, you're in just about every scene, aren't you, really? Because it's all in in Charlie's room. That's right. It's a two-bedroom apartment in anywhere, Idaho. It's a story that's told behind closed doors all over the country, the continent, the world. Yeah. One that we're not familiar with because we just don't go into that room very often mm. for all manner of reasons. But this film extends an invitation to its audience. Yeah. And if that invitation is met with a furrowed brow, then we're not going to get anywhere. But if you accept it and go see how... Mm. What Charlie's World is, um, it's, it's a, a lot more f- fulfilling than you would have expected. Exactly. And the thing about it is we can be so judgmental yeah. and we never know what's going on in people's lives. Yeah. You know, whether it's someone like, like Charlie who's now weighing 600 pounds, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's dying. I mean, he's, he's, he, he, is, he, he really is. Yeah. Or somebody who's, who's homeless and we don't know. And everybody's got their story. Mm-hmm. And that's what I loved about the film. You know, gradually we get to know why he's like this, Mm -hmm. but yet still he's somebody, he's a very pure soul, isn't he? He's relentlessly, annoyingly positive to his friends. (laughs) He's really positive. I think it's probably, you know, I thought, he's someone who's been derided all his life in all manner of ways. And he had to make a decision at some point to either just collapse and not exist or take the opposite approach, which he chose to do. Mm. I don't know if anybody else could have done it, but you? (laughs) I really don't. I can't imagine anybody else in the role. I can't imagine anybody bringing that sort of real vulnerability as, as well. You know, it's, it's, it's quite remarkable. And, of course, we remember you. I mean, my daughter now, we must have watched George of the Jungle 199 <laughs> times. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. It still makes me laugh. It was a fantastic film. Thanks. The Mummy, all these amazing films. But you being you, because you give 110% all the time, I mean, you still got injuries from those movies. Because you went, oh, I'll do that. No, that's fine. Don't worry, I'll be fine. And then, you, you know, you've sort of got a broken arm and you're bouncing back up again and you just get on with it. It's amazing. Well, it, there's a certain... Um... I'd rather work smart than work hard these days. So. <laughs> I think you're very wise. <laughs> I think you're very, very wise. Because it was, it was a great time, and then you had a really horrible experience, an awful experience when you were much younger. And you, again, you bounce back from that. You know, I mean, well, there is a real vulnerability in, in, about you. You're a strong, strong man. You're very kind to say. No, but it's true, and you've managed to do... You know, incredible things. And everybody, what's it been like? Because everybody, you know, as, as soon as I said I was going to be talking to you, everybody, oh, I love them. <laughs> Always wonderful. Nobody's got a bad word to say about you. Now, that doesn't happen in Hollywood land. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we're in the UK right now. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't. It really doesn't. What do you put that down to, that sort of being able to be a survivor, being able to forgive, and just being able to go on and do... S- the best work that you've ever done. Straight up, I've got three kids. I know what it means to have all the love I'll ever need in my life. Right. And I don't have anything to prove. So I'm 
I'm keen to just make work that I think will reach people in a meaningful way. Yeah. You make one for fun. You make one for money. You make yeah. one for prestige. If you're lucky, you get to make one at all. And that I could be a part of a film that is reaching people and is hopefully changing some hearts and minds mm. about the way that we speak about one another in terms of weight bias, um, which is a very serious concern of, of mine of, for everyone. There's, there's harm to be done that can be done mm. by the way that we speak to one another. When you find out Charlie's story is absolutely heartbreaking and it all just clicks into place, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But you as an actor, you've got no vanity whatsoever. You can see that from the, from the performance. And that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. But physically very demanding, I would have thought, when you've got to, you know, use all those prosthetics yeah. to look bigger, to look much bigger, obviously. It, it was um, a rule that this makeup and costume would obey the laws of physics and gravity, be appropriately cumbersome, yeah. so that there was less to affect in a performance. So often we've seen weight gain costuming that is really just a silhouette or almost a Halloween costume with a exactly. fit actor and something yeah. that's, you know, cotton batting, really. And yeah. it, it's in service of a one note joke or mm. to just vil vilify a character in a way yep. that's unfair. Yep. But clearly, this is not that. No, not um, at all. Not at all. And the, 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 the process itself to create this is interesting because this film was made during the time of COVID mm -hmm. and uh, Adrian Moreau, our makeup artist, he didn't have access to one another. So I was scanned digitally with an iPad in my driveway that was sent to him. No. He created Charlie's body virtually as a wow. 3D model and then printed appliances that a mold could be made right. from, skipping a process of compounding and sculpting. So he had absolute control over right. The, the, the size of your pores, the anomalies in the skin, the textures of wrinkles in the eyes, everything. And for that, it succeeds because if you were to see any of the seams or the dotted lines or any artifice in it this, this look, it would take you out of the story. Of it would, and after yeah. five minutes of spending time with this guy, you kind of feel either I want to be his friend or I know him or I want to know him. That's yeah. how I felt when I read yeah. the story. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't distract you. You can go on his emotional journey with him. Absolutely. You know what? Thank you for You're making it. Um, <laughs> obviously, I think, you know, I would save a space on your mantelpiece for that Oscar or whatever <laughs> you want to put it because unbelievable performance, really. And I cannot wait to see what you're going to do next. Thanks, Lorraine. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been an absolute delight. Thank My absolute you. pleasure. And The Whale is out next Friday. Honestly, I could not recommend it highly enough.